What's up? It's Moan Show with another session of Get Schooled. Are you ready for today's pop quiz? Okay, here we go. Name one advantage of multi-degree Rotom. Is it A, using it will put you six degrees away from Kevin Bacon, B, it makes a better tattoo than I love Billy Bob, or C, the ability to add wavelengths remotely? Don't know the answer? Don't worry. Sit back, relax. It's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphis, and I'm here today to talk with Kim Papakis about optical evolution. So, Kim, the first thing we want to talk about at the highest level is we have this proliferation of traffic and, and so forth out there. So what's really causing the, the evolution of uh, optics as we know it? So there's been a, uh, a big push and a big increase for capacity. Uh, and the biggest thing that's driving that is really a lot of the deployments that are related around video and delivering video and in particular IPTV to the home. Uh, with IPTV, there's an increase uh, requirements in bandwidth that is beyond the typical transport that we've had to transport in the past. So as a result, uh, there are some factors that we need to do. Uh, the increase in capacity is, is the largest one and also the ability to dynamically design networks and scale them uh, according to the traffic flows. If we stand back and look at it, the first thing uh, that needs to get uh, addressed or has been addressed is the, uh, is the optical piece. Uh, the ability for us to be able to provide sort of larger capacity pipes that are more flexible in terms of their uh, start locations and their end locations and can grow as the traffic demand grows. So the first area is an increase in the, uh, in the optical piece and we've really used Rotom technology as the key engine, the key driver to enable us to up or upscope the capacity of the, uh, and, the, and the ability or the flexibility of the, uh, of the optics piece. On the interface side, we've also integrated ADM functionality, so both Sonnet and SDH ADM capability into the platform. So that's a consolidation of what typically would be a standalone mm -hmm. system, getting, in, getting embedded and incorporated into the platform. In addition to that, there's also the driver for packet capabilities, in particular layer two capabilities, and that's also being embedded into the platform. So we have a few disciplines going on. We have the increase of optical capability and the, using Rotom as the key piece for that. We're also integrating Sonnet and SDH ADM capability into the system and also packet, and in particular layer two packet uh, integration into the system. So talking about Rotom, everybody throws the term Rotom out there. What do we really get with Rotom? So versus, what, versus, you know, the, the previously what, what wasn't available and so forth. So Dave, so previously uh, we dealt with point-to-point -point based systems and in particular it was a simple MUX, DMUX hierarchy uh, that created fairly static routes in the sense that you would get the traffic on at one location, you would take it across and you would drop it off. Uh, while that worked uh, for uh, fibre exhaust applications, it really didn't meet uh, networks that changed, dynamically changed their bandwidth requirements on a, on a periodic basis. So one thing that Rotom does bring to the table is first it increases the capacity. Typical systems are about 30, 32 channels. Uh, Rotom introduced for, in our particular case, uh, we have the highest uh, channel count of 44 channels. So we've increased from 32 channels to 44 channels. So we've increased the artery. The other thing that Rotom allows us to do is allow us to deal with different degrees and in particular wavelength steering between degrees, i.e. taking wavelengths from one fibre span and routing it to another fibre span independently of the other wavelengths. And this is done without electrical conversion so it provides a very cost effective manner for you to actually groom and steer wavelengths through different degrees or different fibre spans without the system. The effect that has on the network is now that you can actually tailor or rapidly grow sporadic A to Z locations independently for each wavelength before you were pretty much, uh, as I use the expression, you pour cement over it. Once it dries, that's your net network architecture. You hit on rotums at a high level and you touched on multi-degree rotums. What essentially do we get when we add up to you know, two degree and three degree and four degree and X degree rotums? Okay, so every degree equals the number of fiber terminations or the number of field fiber spans that you can terminate. Uh, so for example, a four degree rotum would allow you to accept four fiber spans coming in from four different directions and allow you to actually provide optical wavelength steering between any one of those fiber spans independently. 
Uh, that's really the, the main function that that provides. What the degrees really allow you to do is to manage those 44 channels across four fibre inputs in the case of a four degree rotum. As you increase the number of degrees, you allow for more fibre terminations to come into that, what's considered an optical cross-connect or a cross-connect ability. If I'm a service provider then, what are the things that I'm looking for in terms of uh, competitive advantage from my vendor, from my optical transport vendor? Is it, is it all about speed? Is it all about size? Is it all about you know, power utilization? What is it that I'm looking for? I think really to answer that question, it's a, it's a combination of capacity, uh, flexibility in a nice, convenient, small form factor. On um, the Talab 7100, we support a full four degrees on one shelf. That is all the overhead optics required to support all the fiber terminations. And we elegantly grow the system to full capacity, which is ultimately up to eight degrees. So you're looking for something that is flexible, that has a large capability, also has the ability to support future technologies. For example, 40 gig, the system really needs to be uh, verified and engineered today to be able to support 40 gig signals even though 40 gig is something that's coming in the near future. Uh, it has to be scalable and it has to also grow elegantly. We need to be able to add wavelengths without touching what's there. You need to be able to change paths without affecting the existing paths that are in service. And even on a wavelength you need to be able to add more capacity onto a multi-port wavelength or a multi-port transponder without affecting the, the signals or the, or the payload that's already on there. You done already? The correct answer was C, the ability to add wavelengths remotely. That was pretty easy, huh? Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> if you missed that one, don't worry. You can always download the cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. See you tomorrow for another pop quiz and maybe we can compare tattoos. <laughs>